Hi, my name is Jeffrey Way, and thank you so much for supporting Rockable Press and Envato. In these video companion screencasts, I'm going to show you exactly how to develop custom themes with Tumblr. So consider these screencasts as counterparts to their chapters from the book. So we're going to get right into it, and this will be the companion to chapter two, where we begin developing uh, the beginnings of a theme and learn how template tags actually work. So you can see here, this is kind of the, the guide to developing for Tumblr. If you've ever worked with WordPress before, you'll be familiar with the WordPress codex. For Tumblr, this is there. So tumblr.com slash docs slash custom themes. And you can see it's all stored on one page and you're gonna, this will be your Bible. You will come back to this over and over as you develop your themes, but hopefully you'll also come to the book because we cover a lot more. So I am within my theme. I have clicked on the customize area and you can see that we have a blank page. So the first step is you don't want to develop your theme within here. It's just not practical. So instead, why don't we work from this custom page? And I'm going to save this to my desktop and we're just going to call it theme.html. And then when we are ready to render this, we just copy it and we can move over here paste it in and update our preview, and that way you don't have to do all of your coding from within this panel. So the first step is to understand how blocks work. So think of blocks as almost, they serve a variety of purposes, but think of them as kind of conditionals. So for example, let's take a look at our first one here. We're gonna use the template tag and we're gonna say block text. Now this designates the opening block and this will designate the closing in the same way that you have an opening and closing HTML element. So what this is saying right here is display the code within, within these template tags only if the post type is of text. So what does post type mean? If we go ahead and close this out, you can see here when the user creates new posts, and I've, I've created a variety of them to get us started. You have text posts, photo, quote, link, chat, audio, and video. Among, actually there's a couple more as well. So let's say in this case, text will apply to text posting. So when the user creates a new text posting, the code within here will be used to render that posting on the page. So I'm gonna go back to my customize area. And let's get started. So within here, uh, let's start very simply. So we're gonna start with an H2 tag and all we're gonna, going to echo out is within anchor tags, title. And within the href, we'll do permalink. Okay, so let's take a look while we're here. We're learning a few new tags here. These are called global properties. Permalink, as you would guess, that refers to the permalink for the posting. So this permalink is available to us because we're within these blocks. And the same thing here, this is the title. So if you've ever worked with uh, maybe WordPress before and you have something like the title, something like that before, this would be the same, but you don't have to use PHP to echo it out. You're simply using these template tags. So all we're gonna do here, we're not even going to display the body. We're just getting our feet wet and we're gonna display a heading tag with a link to the posting and the name of the posting. So let's save that, go back. I'm gonna update my preview, save it. And now if I go over to this next page, this is our actual theme, which can be accessed at rockabletumblr.tumblr.com. Now, if I refresh the page, you're not going to see anything. And that's because this is a common mistake when you're first getting started. You cannot add this code without wrapping it within posts. So we have to tell Tumblr where our posts section is. And we can do that easily by doing block posts. And now we can say anything within here will be our posts. Otherwise, we Tumblr would have no idea of what we're referring to. So here, if we save that and we try it one more time, now it's going to work. So I'll update the preview, save it. And if I switch over, and refresh the page, now we get a list of titles. So these are simply just sample postings that I've created to get us started. And if I hover over them, you'll see that each one links to the permalink for that post. So let's click on the key to being awesome. And we're directed to a blank page. Notice we don't have any theme here. We don't have any CSS. And that's what we're gonna be working on. That way you don't have to worry about too much clutter. All you have to worry about is Tumblr and Tumblr only. So now you can see we are on a a 
permalink page that just has the title. Okay, so if we want, we can take this a step further. Now, if you'd like to know what is specifically available to you, you can always come to the custom HTML page or refer to the book. So if we click on text posts, you can see a listing of what's available to us. And in this case, we have, uh, I'm sorry, that's photo post. There we go. We have the title. Now, that's kind of interesting. We have blocks for the title. Okay, well, that's a bit odd. We'll come back to that. And we have body. And this is what else we need. And this is going to be the content of the body or whatever they write in the posting. So let's try that. Let's come back to theme. And within here, I'm just going to add it like that body. Let's update the preview, save it again. And now you can see, refresh the page, we're going to get the body for each of these postings. So if I view source, let's take a look and you can see it pretty much just grabs whatever the user types within the new post uh, panel and it puts that in there. Okay, so if you need to, you can wrap that in a div if you need it for styling purposes, but already you've developed a custom theme. So if we click here, this is what's so incredible about Tumblr is you don't have to build all these different template pages. It makes it as simple as it can possibly be. So right here, assuming you are only wanting, wanting to use Tumblr as a journal, this would be perfectly fine. If you didn't want comments, this would work. If it was only for your own purposes, you have a working blog here with with literally five lines of code. Isn't that incredible? However, we of course are going to take this much further. So the next thing we're going to take a look at before we go any further with post types is uh, global variables, custom site variables. So if I click on this info tab, there's an option for me to enter a Tumblr toolbox, a description, a portrait URL, could be like your avatar. And if you want, you can use a custom domain that will forward here. So let's take a look how we can access the values of title and description. And these will be available via the site uh, variables that I referred to. So again, just to give you more of a visual representation, let's come down here. And if I go to basic variables, you can see we have a, a variety of these available to us. So obviously title is going to correspond to whatever you type in here. Description. And notice that title is going to be different outside Right here, you have title. This is going to be different when it's outside of post. So in this case, this is going to refer to the name, the title of your website, while this, once it's wrapped within blog post, will refer to the title of that specific posting. Be sure to keep that in mind. Now let's see what else we have. We have description, and that's going to correspond to the description that we offer. Uh, we have a variety of things. Meta description is going to be HTML safe, but essentially the same thing. Uh, we have RSS for the RSS feed, uh, the fav icon that can be uploaded right here. Let's go ahead and remove that. And we have a, a, a plethora of things, custom CSS. We'll come back to all of this, but now let's just focus on the title and the description. So let's come back here and right up here, I'm going to add title. And why don't we do the same thing at the top since we're not actually going to be building a full theme, we're only working with Tumblr. We'll do title. And then below it, uh, we can do a quick description. So we'll do description. This is as simple as it is. That's why Tumblr is especially handy for designers because you don't have to worry about a bunch of code. It's all very straightforward. So as always, we save that, go back to our theme, update our custom theme. Do note that the first time you visit this, you'll need to enable custom HTML. And we'll save that, come back, and if we refresh the page, the very top, we get the title and the description. So if I change this, Tumblr Toolbox, by the way, is going to be the companion uh, tutorial site for this book. We'll change it to my new site, save that, and refresh, and that's been updated. So within just a few moments, literally, you can create a Tumblr account build a custom theme, and even if it's black and white like we have here, within two moments, you can have a working site. Go back, my new post. Now, of course, we need to take this a step further, but that's going to get you started. Next, we can, let's take a look at the RSS feed. So if we wanna do it right here, I'm just gonna keep it very simple, and we're going to say subscribe to the RSS feed. This could be represented with an icon or however you want. And we'll go to the very front, and within an anchor tag, I'm going to set the href to RSS. Save that, custom piece. 
paste that in, and let's go ahead and add the body as well. Update the preview, save it, and now we get our posting because we are on a specific posting. So if I remove that, give it just a moment to load. There we go. And now we have all of our postings, and we do have a link to the RSS feed. And if you look at the very bottom left hand corner, that auto generates the link for us. Next, let's go ahead and add our avatar. So if we go back to info and we choose a portrait photo, I'm going to grab this little avatar that Ian created for me. So let's save that. And now in order to access that, if we come back, we can see that we have a variety of uh, variables available to us. Portrait URL dash, and then this is equivalent to the pixel. So 16 pixels, 24. Why don't we do something like 48? So I can copy that, come back to our page. And we can put this anywhere. Why don't we put it right next to, I don't know, right here with the image. And within template text, there we go. There's a property. Let's save it, come back. Hopefully you're amazed at how easy to understand this is. Save it, refresh the page. And now we have our avatar. You can float this. You can do whatever you want with it. So as always, you can direct it with your standard CSS if you want to give it an ID and then refer to that. Tumblr is just HTML, CSS, but Tumblr is the framework which takes care of the actual blog. Now there's another parameter we need to take a look at. Not a parameter, but a property. And you can see here this variable, custom CSS. And what this is for is that when the person, when people use your theme, there's a section right here to add custom CSS. But this won't work by default because we have to tell Tumblr where to place it. So in general, you'll find that you place your styling within your posting. And you don't have to do this. Technically, you could link to it. And you can do that for some stylings. But if you want to give the most flexibility to the user of your theme, you need to uh, embed your styling, especially when you offer things like customization options. Uh, there really isn't an easy way to offer uh, the ability to change, for example, the color of the text if you're referencing a external style sheet. So keep that in mind. So up here, we would, we would reference all of our standard styling. But then at the bottom, if we add custom CSS, this tells Tumblr that any information entered right here will be entered right here. And it's generally best place it at the bottom. That way, anything they add will override your styling as they would want. So for now, why don't we just test it out? And we'll say body, background, kind of a grayish color. And then we'll allow custom CSS. OK, I'm going to update our preview. And now we're going to switch over to the Advanced tab. And I'm going to override that. I'm going to say body, background. And just to be obnoxious, we'll say red. Save it. And if I come back and refresh the page, you're going to see red has been applied. View source. And it's because where we designated uh, custom CSS, this is where that information was added. So if we had put custom CSS at the very top, my styling would have overwritten the previous one due to the cascading nature of CSS. So you want to make sure you always add that to your themes. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. So that's going to do it for chapter two. In chapter three, we're going to move on and take a look at the different post types that are available.